Freddy, say hi to the people. Say hi to the people. I'm taking care of my parents' dog. How's it going, everybody? Ed Ricker here, and today, we're making a video about the Mavic Pro. Now, this is kind of revisiting the Mavic Pro in certain aspects that I've already made videos about, like, 10 months ago. The color profiles have changed in the app. The, the sharpness that you need to have to get a good quality image has kind of changed a little bit. And after reviewing so many accessories for this thing, I've realized what's worth it and what's not. So, let's dive into how I use the Mavic in October of 2017. Now, right off the bat, uh, if you look closely, you don't see an iPad Mini 4 anymore. And that was a really big part of early 2017 was me really being excited about using the iPad Mini 4 as my primary display for the controller to control the drone to see what's going on. I have changed my views on that a bit, a bit. I have since invested in an iPhone 7 Plus. I got it after the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus was released, so this dropped in price. And it made it super convenient for me to get a 5.5 inch display, which is still pretty sizable, uh, to use with the controller of the DJI Mavic. Now there's always been speculation that the DJI Go app and the Mavic have been kind of designed to be used with Apple products. I'm not gonna say that's exclusively true, but I will say, if you see my latest unboxing of a Mavic Pro with my friend Dave, you'll know that on the box these days, it actually says that it's kind of meant or designed or created to be working with the iPhone. Now you'll notice I took my case off my iPhone. That's because this case is a little bit too thick to fit into the arms of the controller. That's why I bought a smaller one. This is almost a paper thin case. So it's gonna protect your phone to a point, but at the same time, it's thin enough that you can actually slip it into the controller arms and you're flying the way it was intended. It's hard to beat that. How, how it feels, how it looks, how it operates, um, as long as you have a cell phone that's fast enough, because that was my original issue. My HTC 626 Desire was too slow to actually run the DJI Go app well. And now I can come back to using my Fly More combo bag, which was sitting in the corner for a while. It's just because I don't have to carry an iPad anymore, so I can use this. And I can go back to my DJI official sun hood for the controller. Um, so yeah, kind of back to square one, and uh, it feels good. Another accessory I use is the, uh, the clip here, which actually uh, kind of protects your thumbsticks on your controller as you slip it back into your bag. Um, so I always put this back on when I'm ready to stow uh, this back into the Fly More combo bag. Now I'm gonna power this on and show you a few things that I do with the app now. Um, some settings I have with the camera. I'll tell you some of the things that may have changed or may have stayed the same since my last videos uh, months ago. First, I'll go into the main controller settings up there at the top. And I'm going to go to Advanced Settings, and then EXP for our, our Expo settings. Now here is where I, I, before I used to have 0 0.25, 0 0.20, and 0.25 from left to right. That's fine. Now when you get a new firmware update, or kind of maybe the DJI Go app updates, it'll change rudder right and rudder left to 0.25, and then I always kind of put it back to 0 0.20. Well, the other day, accidentally, I was putting in 0 0.20, hit return, and then with my right finger, I must have kind of gone up and down or something with the, the forward, right, and back, left uh, EXP setting, and I made it go all the way to 0.9, which made the drone super responsive with the left to right, forward, backward motion of the right thumbstick. And I didn't know what was going on. I was checking, I'm like, am I in sport mode? What the, what the, what's going on here? Uh, that's happened a few times now. You really have to be careful in this EXP window here because if you change something drastically with your control sensitivity and you're in tight corners, you're going to crash and um, you're going to have a bad day. So now back in February, I made a video and I kind of rushed it. I posted it. It was called The Beginner's Guide to the Mavic Pro. Only issue was there were some typos and stuff, which you guys all let me know about. Yes, I unboxed it in 2016, not 2017, thank you. But I also said that I limited my max flight distance to 200 meters verbally, but I showed 2,000 meters. Well, I meant 2,000. I know it's been a while after the fact. I probably should have said that earlier. I still have my max flight distance at 2,000 and my max flight altitude at 120. Return to home altitude. Right now, I still have it at 80 meters. I'm not sure what I had it before, but right now, 80 meters is what? Uh, 240, 250 feet, maybe? Um, so that works out really great in terms of having the drone return at an altitude higher than most things around me. 
as we go down the list of things here, a lot of them are the same. Um, they're kind of like the default values that when you kind of reinstall the app or whatever. But um, for the low battery warning, I do bring that down to 15%. 20% was a little bit too much. Um, sometimes I still had some juice left and I didn't want to hear that that beeping, that warning, the low battery warning. So I took it down to 15, which is actually the minimum. My gimbal settings are pretty much the same, 15 and 20 for the pitch speed and pitch smoothless respectively. Now let's go to camera settings on the uh, lower-ish right. Go to the middle option there for your video settings. White balance is always set to something applicable. I usually don't try and do the auto function just because it never gets it right. Now for style, I still kind of tend toward a, a minus one on the softness. I just, I don't like that sharpness that comes from the camera. And, and I don't really mind some of that, that um, you know, digital, that in-camera softening that happens. Now there are some people that say you should always use like a plus one on the sharpness. First of all, I've never had good luck with that. It always looks bad. And some of the issues that come with having a plus one sharpness, such as very, very weird, grainy, sandpaperish textures in your image when you're shooting grass or sometimes leaves on trees or sometimes even water surfaces. I can't get rid of that by just softening in post. Um, I'd much rather have a softer image than a very, very sharp image that includes some of that weird texture that I just cannot get over. Now the sensors have never really failed me. However, if you point the drone into the sun, say the sun and maybe it's four or five o'clock, the sun is going down, but it's still very, very bright. It causes a lens flare or something happens where the forward facing sensors catch that sun and instantly think it's an object and they'll stop. You have to turn off your sensors and that kind of sucks too. Um, so you kind of have to get rid of the protection because it's malfunctioning. Color, color profiles. I used to shoot a lot in uh, normal and then I started to kind of mess with some of the other ones. Right now, my favorite go-to is blue. Don't mistake it with cool, but go to blue. I think that was the um, Agate B color profile that I used to use back in the day. These names change, but my favorite is blue, and it kind of adds a little bit of a bluish hue, a little bit of coolness to the picture. Not in a way that would make it look like it's a cold day, but rather it just kind of like seems to up some of the dynamic range and and gives it just a, the sky and, and, and blue houses, blue cars, blue water, just a little bit more of a punch to it. And I, I really, really enjoy that color. Now, right now it says we have capacity of two hours and 21 minutes of 4K recording. It came with a 16 gigabyte card. And first of all, that wasn't really enough. I was running out of space a lot. You only get like 37 minutes of recording time on a 16 gigabyte. Secondly, it actually ended up crapping out on me and I had to throw away the card. And it was, it was making my drone behave very erratically, and I wasn't sure why. I thought maybe my drone had to be sent in for repair. Uh, but actually, it turned out to be just this. So this is my new 64 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme micro SD card. Reads very fast, it writes very fast, have no problems since. I also use this for my Phantom 4 Pro uh, for professional gigs, so I, I believe in it. I still don't shoot in 1080 at 60 frames per second or 96 or whatever. If you recall back in January, I made a video about how 60 and 96 frames per second on this drone do not look good. There's some really gross aliasing on edges of things and hard lines and it just looks really, really bad in motion. Now, if you want to shoot in 60 or you need to shoot in 60, that's fine. I mean, you could, but it doesn't really have the quality of picture that I'm looking for so I just end up not even going for it. Now, a couple of months ago, I reviewed this YMCA charger right here. Um, it actually charges three Mavic batteries at the same time, as opposed to the Fly More Combo battery charger hub that only charges one at a time. I do use this, I still do. In fact, if I wanna get multiple flight sessions in in a day, or um, I forgot to charge, and I need to charge everything really quickly, then I definitely pull this out. However, if I have some time, if I want to charge overnight or if I want to charge and I want to leave the house, uh, I still use the Mavic Pro uh, original DJI charger. Like I, I want to trust that thing, but at the same time, since it's a third party charger, um, I'm leery. I'm leery. Uh, I still use it. I just, I don't know. I feel like it takes a little more supervision and I, I don't trust that it would simply turn off on its own every single time. Uh, so I don't want something to be damaged or something to not charge correctly. So. I still use it, just not every single time. Um, speaking of other things I don't use, um, I don't use prop guards anymore, ever. In fact, I only used them once for that video. Landing gear, nah. 
If the grass is tall or if it's a rocky area, I just catch this thing. I also did a video about that too. In fact, if, if you have any questions about the Mavic Pro and you want to ask me, I, I suggest you do a search on my channel because I've done a ton. And I don't use the uh, gimbal sunshade hood ever. Uh, except unless I need to protect the lens. Maybe I'm thinking I'm going to fly in some place that could be dangerous. Then I might use it as lens protection or gimbal protection. But otherwise, it just doesn't really block any sunlight to speak of. It's not really worth it to me. I do use the Polar Pro uh, ND and polarizer filters. And these, I actually made a video when I first got 500 subscribers. I, I, told, I talked about these. And I use them every single time I'm flying in sunny weather. It's just going to happen. So um, I really enjoy these. They've held up well. The case is a little scuffed because it's plastic, but the, the lens filters are, are perfect. So check the link in the description to all the things I still use here. Um, and what else do I still use? The original gimbal clamp and cover. These things, yeah, I still use them every single time. And it got a lot easier. I mean, I think the first couple times when I had the drone, I didn't really want to have to go through that process, which took me literally 10 minutes. Now it's just kind of like, I know how to do it. It's easy. Last time I unboxed that Mavic Pro with Dave, we uh, kind of went through that process of just trying to get that muscle memory down about how this to go back on, because it should every single time. This might be the most challenging part of the entire setup process. Okay, now <laughs> I'm getting pissed. <laughs> uh, it really protects things, it holds it. It's not gonna vibrate around all day as you're traveling or walking around. So I always use this when I'm traveling or even just walking around with a drone. Finally, I use a lens cloth. I just always have it in there. Could be an eyeglass cloth, it could be anything, but something like that. Something just to wipe it that isn't your shirt or your blue jeans. Now, I have not crashed this since the day I tried to use those prop guards <laughs> because I was kind of asking for it. But I have been careful, and I haven't uh, had any issues. Um, the arms still kind of have a little bit of a spring to them, so they haven't really gotten loose, even though I've done that about a thousand times to them. Rotors, gimbal, everything appears healthy. Um, in spite of some of the things I have done with this, it's actually held up pretty well, so I've been happy with that. Now, even though the FAA no longer requires us in the United States to uh, register our drones with them, uh, I still have my number in here. And even if I wasn't using this for commercial or non-recreational purposes, I probably still would. I paid five bucks and my time is way more valuable than to chase down a refund. So I still have the registration and I'll keep it in there. All right, that's pretty much it. Um, I've flown this a couple times recently just to kind of get some more footage and kind of have a good time with it, especially since I got my iPhone. It's been a pleasure again um, and I really like to fly this little buddy. I'm trying to find some new places to fly around here and actually I've been attending a few public forums uh, that Raleigh, North Carolina was uh, kind of setting up to, to make sure that we know where we can fly safely and, and whether they're overstepping their reach and, and restricting us on where to fly around here. So if you guys actually do want to come to any of those forums, I, I definitely would say if you live in the Raleigh, Raleigh area, you know, make sure your voice is heard and, and go to the, some of those forums. Um, and that goes with everyone in an, any city. I mean, if there's something going on uh, that is, is affecting regulations locally, attend those meetings so that you know and you can make your voice heard and you can actually kind of help uh, these people design these laws, these rules and regulations uh, with some people who actually know what a quadcopter actually is and does as opposed to people in a suit and tie in a room somewhere who's never even seen one in real life. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Check out my website, edricker.com, or the video description for a list to most of these things that I still currently use and that I find have the most value. If you have any other questions about the Mavic Pro or how I continue to use it or my thoughts on a particular aspect, just let me know. I'll try and answer them. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching and happy flying.